all right hey guys once again welcome to our channel hopefully you guys are doing great in today's video we will be dealing with a new concept actually again it's not a new concept but yeah it's a continuation of one of our concepts that we were discussing in our previous videos anyways let's see so as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail in today's lecture we will be dealing with electronic configurations all right so we have uh, again as i mentioned uh, earlier in my previous videos that we have mostly covered the, the part of the electronic configuration there's some of the part is left out that we have to cover in this video and maybe i think um, two or more videos will cover the electronic configurations and then we'll be starting with ionization energy hopefully so without wasting our precious time let's get cough all right so what does what do we mean by electronic configuration firstly now this electronic configuration it gives us information about the number of electrons in each shell subshell and orbital of an atom if you're not if you're not aware of the terms shell and uh, subshell and orbital make sure you check out our previous videos all right now let's further discover further discover that how these electrons are arranged in their shell, subshell, and orbitals. Now, the subshells are filled in order of increasing energy. Now, as we discussed in our previous video, that um, there's a specific pattern they are following when they are filling the subshells. When the electrons are filling subshells, firstly they fill the 1s subshell, then they fill the 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, and so on it goes. So you need to be aware of the pattern they are following. Let's discover further. Now here you can see, one second, I think just left, okay. Now here you can see a diagrammatic snapshot showing that how the electrons, how we can write the electronic configurations. Now there's an example uh, that we have, there's a shell number one, energy level one, that's the principal quantum number, that's n equals one, and then we have the subshell that is represented by the s all right and then we have the number of electrons so as we know that um, the s subshell can accommodate only one electron all right s subshell can accommodate maximum of two electrons but in this case we have only one electron because we are just showing an example of how the electronic configuration looks like how the electrons are filled in these subshells and how the electrons are uh, accommodating are filling in the principal quantum numbers let's just see more about that how we can just fill all of them let's see an explained version all right now what are firstly we already know that these electrons are tiny particles that they are carrying a negative charge and these negative charged electrons can be imagined as small spinning charges which rotate around their own axis in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction the spin of the electron is represented by its direction so these electrons they are spinning and some of them might be spinning clockwise or some of them might be spinning anti-clockwise but if they are spinning anti-clockwise they'll be following the anti-clockwise direction only they will not rotate clockwise and if they are rotating clockwise this means they will only follow the clockwise direction Let's see how we can uh, illustrate this by a diagram. All right, now here you can see the diagram. Uh, let me just take an ink here. Let's see this. Okay, now you can see here that in the first case, this one, you can see the electron is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. No, it's a clockwise, sorry. It's a clockwise direction. You can see like this. It's a clockwise direction, right? And it will only rotate clockwise. And here you can see this electron is uh, rotating anti-clockwise. Here we have the south and here we have the north. So you should be aware of the fact they rotate around their own axis in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Let's see further. Now, 
what happens if we have electrons with similar spin for example if i take two electrons let's say and they both rotate in a clockwise direction all right so what will happen those electrons with similar spin they will repel each other okay they will repel each other in other in other words which which is also called spin pair repulsion now they will have to do something if the electrons which uh, if they are having similar spin they, if they are repelling each other now what will electrons will be able to do, will, be, will be able to do they will elect, they will occupy separate orbitals in the same subshell to minimize this repulsion so mainly their goal is to minimize this repulsion and what will happen so they will occupy the separate orbitals separate orbitals in the same subshell so actually for example they are in s let's say p subshell and there are three p orbitals p x p y and p z all right so now what will happen to completely minimize this repulsion they will occupy each electron will occupy separate orbital okay so one electron one electron will occupy p x orbital one electron will occupy p y orbital and one electron will occupy p z orbital so example if there are three electrons in a p subshell what will happen that one electron will go into each p x p y and p z orbital so i think till now you're getting that what is the point of discussing this let's see further now there might be cases there might be scenarios where like for ex uh, so firstly the example let's see uh, so here is an example that we can illustrate that how the electrons will occupy let me just do some labeling here so you can see this is a p subshell and is occupying three p orbitals right so this is one box above each box represents an atomic orbital so this is one orbital this is two orbital this is three orbital total we have three orbitals so this first one we can say is px the second one we can say it's py and the third one we can say is pz now you can see how each electron is occupying different atomic orbitals and so they are minimizing the repulsion and you can see this is a half arrow in each orbital we have a half arrow and this half arrow is representing the spin of each electron half arrow represents one electron all right i think you are getting it now let's discuss other scenarios now what will happen this is the the previous one that we were discussing now was the case where we had only three electrons that, that is not the problem each electron will go into separate p orbitals now what if we have more than three electrons let's say we have uh four electrons let's say so how can the electrons occupy themselves in these um three orbitals let's say let's see electrons now the electrons are only paired when there are no more empty orbitals available within a subshell now as i soon as i see this statement i get an idea that the case the the pattern they will be following now that they will be pairing themselves one of the electrons will be pairing with the other of the electron and the rest will remain unpaired in which the case the spins are the opposite spins to minimize repulsion all right so they are spinning opposite so to minimize this repulsion now they are spinning in the opposite direction now let's see an example if there are four electrons in a p subshell now one p orbital will contain two electrons with the opposite spin so they can minimize the repulsion this is because of this spin in the same direction as i discussed uh, previously that they will have spin pair repulsion so minimize that spin pair repulsion what they will do they will occupy uh, the same orbital but with opposite spins and the two orbitals that that are left behind will contain one electron only and will have the spin in the same direction because there are no other electrons available now let's see in a diagrammatic snapshot of how these electrons will occupy the orbitals now this is a diagram to show you again we have a p subshell there are three p orbitals one minute there are three p orbitals we can see once oh, i didn't take the pen one it's here okay yeah so you can see there are three p orbitals px py pz and you can see the first px orbital is containing two electrons and they are with opposite arrows opposite arrows means opposite spins okay so if, uh, let's say if the first one is rotating clockwise the second one will rotate anti clockwise all right and the rest of them are as it is because as i mentioned previously that uh, there's only one extra electron that one extra electron has recovered itself 
and uh, then we have these two electrons in py and pz orbital and they are having their spin in the same direction because there is no electron to affect their spin now let's see further what will happen Now I hope mostly most of you are getting this that what exactly is the point of this discussion. Now if you talk about principal quantum number, now principal quantum number as I said as I mentioned in my previous videos, make sure you check out those videos. The principal quantum number, we can say n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. What does this indicate now? This will indicate the energy level of a particular shell. Okay, It will indicate how much energy a particular shell has. For example, n equals 1, the principal quantum number, that shell energy shell equals 1 will have an energy corresponding to n equals 1. n equals 2 will have a uh, energy, will have an energy corresponding to n equals 2. Okay. Now, this will not only indicate the energy level of a particular shell, but also indicates the energy of the electron in that shell. Now, we can say that if an electron is in, uh, let's say, 1s, okay, and if the second electron is in let's say 3p so which one will have will, which one will be having more energy obviously n equals 3 because we discussed through this point we have come to that conclusion that um, uh, energy of the electrons also increases with principal quantum number all right the principal quantum number is the main thing that will give us uh, to distinguish between the um, different electrons Okay, for example, as I discussed now, that if an, if an electron is in 1s, it will be having least energy. And if an electron is in 3p, it will be, it, it will be having high energy. All right. So here we have an example also 2p electron is in the second shell and therefore has an energy corresponding to n equals 2. So it will be having that type of energy. So, all right. Now, what? let's just discuss one more thing. Now, even though there is repulsion between the negatively charged electrons, in other terms, we can say inter-electron repulsion, all right, they occupy the same region of space in orbitals. So what is the reason why they occupy the same region of space in orbitals? Because as we discussed, their main goal is to minimize that repulsion. But why they're doing that? Let's see the reason. Now, this is because the energy required to jump to successive empty orbital is greater than the inter-electron repulsion. So as we know, the lower energy levels are filled first. So, but since the energy required to jump to successive empty orbital, for example, if I'm 1s, okay, if I'm in 1s and I, I am having two electrons, I need to shift one of the, uh, into the successive empty orbital. But what happens that the energy required to jump to that empty orbital is greater. I need the least energy. I need to minimize that energy. And that's why I'm having inter-electron repulsion. I hope you're getting the point. For this reason, they pair up and occupy the lower energy levels first. This is a really important part of the discussion you should be aware of. All right, so we are done with today's video. Um, I hope this was a very useful lecture for many of you. And um, I believe that uh, you will go through all of these and this is a, as I said this is a very important part to make sure you are aware of all these facts you are aware of their reasons why they do this why uh, the, the electrons why there is a why the energy required to jump to successive empty orbital is greater than the internal electron repulsion and uh, what happens and what is the principal quantum in, in quantum number indicating all right and also there are many important points that why you should uh, state that you should be familiar with that for example we have uh, we discussed the fact that there were three electrons in a p subshell and if there are more than three electrons how the uh, subshells how the electrons will make them capable will make them capable of filling those orbitals so i hope you are getting the point of the discussion again all right let's not make it complicated uh, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, comment down below. So as per your suggestions, I can improve the video, the content of the video. And mention in the comments that in what concepts of chemistry or in other subjects or in other higher disciplines of sciences, what you are facing, what is the common problem, what is the common topic that you are facing difficulty in. So that's it for today's video. Cheers.